one action. All right, let's start with um, proof by exhaustion. Now, this is quite a nice proof because all you're doing is just testing the various number of possibilities you can get. So, say for example, you had a question where you had to prove that no square number ends in 8, or ends in an 8, given 8 begins with E. Okay, no square number ends in an 8. <coughs> Now, obviously, we can't test every square number. Yeah? We can't test every square number. So that would be infinite. What can we do instead? What sort of argument can we establish? That's it, What numbers, um, when you square them, yeah. what they end in? Why, how does that work? Can you say a bit more about that? Well, it works because. Um, so when you take, with the single digit ones, yeah. it works because there's only one digit, so when yeah. you square it, the n digit will, that can't change. But yeah. you have, um, so you've got 25. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because that ends in 5, yeah. when you times that, it doesn't really matter what the like first numbers are. Yeah. It only matters what the n digit is. Try it. So instead of 25, if you had x5, or even xx, xx5, You'll always have 5 times 5, for example, that gives you 25, carry the 2 over and, and carry on. So therefore, the number that ends tells us uh, everything we need to know about the last part of the answer. So when we square a number, the last digit tells us all about the last answer. And that's where Treschenberg's B system of doing maths is quite a good one. It deals with all these sort of um, internal patterns that you see. Uh, Trashenberg, has anyone heard of him? Right, Trashenberg was a, I think he was a math professor in the Jewish camps, uh, in the torture camps, and in order to stop himself going insane with all this torture that you're seeing, he started doing maths. He, obviously, he didn't have any paper, so any sort of newspaper or something that came in, he used to, he used to write down uh, all these little things that he found on them. He ended up developing a whole system of just doing quick maths, uh, the Trashenberg speed system, it's called. You can buy it off Amazon. And also there's um, the um, um, uh, Vedanta, Vedic maths. Yeah, that's quite interesting as well. That's quite a sophisticated system based on 16 sutras. But anyway, uh, what we could do is basically say um, the final digit of any squared number. So let's write that down. The final digit of any where number is determined is determined only by the final number of its square. So therefore, what we could do is just reduce the whole problem to one di digit. Okay, therefore, let's reduce the problem to one digit. <coughs> we're going to reduce it to one digit. Is everyone okay with what I've just said? We're just going to reduce it to one digit. And okay, we're looking for square numbers. The last part, we say, never ends in eight. And we're saying, well, it doesn't matter how big the number is. All we need to do is consider the last digit of that number. Because when you square it, that determines the last digit of your actual answer. Is that okay? Yes? No? Okay, cool. All right, so all we have to do then is then just square out our numbers. So it's 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. Okay, uh, so 1, 4, 9. Um, and we can just write out all the possibilities. 16, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, and 10 squared. 
Well, obviously that's a two-digit number. But we can just say the square, not none of the square numbers um, end in eight. Yeah. Okay, therefore there are no square numbers um, and you know that end in eight. But notice what I'm doing. I'm not writing long paragraphs, but I am writing short, sharp sentences. I do realize, and please don't do this, I have marked some papers where people are doing this, and they just show the working out like this. And sometimes they won't pick up all the marks. You need to put in a short, sharp sentence just to explain what you're doing. Okay? Assume the examiner is a GCSE math student. Just explain what you're doing. Shall we do another one? Let me do another one because it involves prime numbers. And that's quite a nice one. Um, prove that there is only one prime number that is less than one. That, or that is one less than a perfect square. Sorry. <coughs> that is one less than a perfect square. A, perfect square? a square number. There's only one prime number that exists like that. Okay, so there's going to be some square number, and one less than that is a prime. And there's only going to be one prime number that, that is like that. Okay? Sorry? Okay. <coughs> Let's see. <laughs> Let's consider, in order to answer the problem, consider any number n. Oops. The square. is going to be n squared. One less than n squared is n squared take away one. <coughs> but n squared take away one is n minus one and plus one. And this can only happen So n squared. So n squared is so this is a product of two numbers. Agree. And can therefore only be prime if what? M one is one six two one. And then yes. Yes, if one of those numbers is 1. And so that's only possible when n equals 2. <coughs> Since you'll have 2 take away 1 is just 1, 2 plus 1 is 3. And one less than that is, so that will give you three as your number. Okay. So for all other values, and it emphasizes product two numbers can only be prime because it's a product. There's your closing argument. If it's a product of two numbers, one of those numbers has to be prime. For it. One of those numbers has to be one for it to be prime, and therefore you establish what n is. For all other values of n, one less than its square is a product of two numbers, and therefore not prime. What about n is zero? Hang on.
All right. Let's let's run through a couple of one or two um, direct proofs. Let's, all right, excuse me. Let's look at this one here. Given that A and B are unequal real numbers, prove that A squared plus B squared is greater than 2AB. So now we're going to do a direct proof. Okay? Given that A and B are unequal real numbers, prove that A squared plus B squared is greater than 2AB. So if A and B are unequal and real. Then we know A take away B is either positive, where A is greater than B, or A take away B is going to be negative where A is going to be less than B. Agree? So, A take away B squared is therefore always going to be what? It's always going to be greater than zero. But we know A take away B squared, if you expand that out, we get A squared minus 2AB plus b squared, and that is greater than zero. Now we can take the 2ab to the other side, and we've got a squared take away b squared is plus b squared is greater than 2ab. And so whether a is greater than b or a is less than b, when you square them you get a positive number, and therefore um, it, you'll have this condition. Therefore, we've shown that this is always going to be true. So there, what, what have we done? We've established a proof where each line follows on as a logical statement from the line before it. And we can go back and use that toolbox and use, them, use that toolbox to write out statements and follow a, a, a rational argument in order to come out with a statement that proves our result. But I'll do one more and then I'll give you one to do. Let's do this one because I think it's quite common. So let me do this one with you. Uh, let's do example two. Prove that the number, oops, prove that a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of digits is divisible by 3. So prove that a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. Okay, so 
say we've got a number. Oops. What we could do is represent it as so. And so the sum of the digits S will just be A plus B plus C and then on. All right, so, so we've got this sum. So we've got some number X. We've got the sum of the digits as so, A, B, C. And therefore, X um, take away S would simply be uh, 9, so A take away A, 10B take away B would give us 9B, and then you've got 99C and 999D, and on and on. And so therefore X, this, this uh, number X will therefore be equal to S plus um, the above. So I can write, I can factor it out straight away. 3, 3B plus uh, 33C and on and on. And what we're saying is if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, so if S is divisible by 3, so that's established, then the whole right hand side is also going to be divisible by 3. Okay. <coughs> because we have this factor of 3 which we've just factorized out. Okay. Just a second. And so therefore, if I've got, if I'm adding two, Simeon, just give me a second. So if I'm just adding two factors of three together, um, then my left-hand side, which equals x, is divisible by three. Capiche? Okay, as a problem, what I'd like you to do is you've worked out, when you did sequences in series C2, you worked out the sum of n terms when you add them using the, the first 1 to 100. Is that correct? Yeah, and you work out the derivation of that using Gauss's method. What I'd like to do is do the same for uh, uh, the geometric series. Okay, so if, if A equals your first term, R is your common ratio, Uh, prove that the sum of the n terms, I'll write it as Sn, equals to ARn minus 1 divided by R minus 1. 